I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on global learning. Now I have compiled few excellent examples from all over the world which will help most of my students. Here is a question from IIT Joint Entrance Examination. Now this question relates to a triangle. Now anybody who is working on triangles, sine law, cosine law, circumscribing and inscribing circles will be interested in this question. Let's look into it and let us also appreciate how everything has been merged into a beautiful question. The question here is, in a triangle PQR, let angle PQR equals to 30 degrees and the sides PQ and QR have length of 10 square root 3 and 10 respectively. Then, which of the following statements is or are true? So there are four statements. We have to figure out which ones are true. A. Angle QPR equals to 45 degrees. B. The area of the triangle PQR is 25 square root 3 and the angle QRP equals to 120 degrees. C. The radius of the inner circle of the triangle PQR is 10 square root 3 minus 15. And D is the area of circumcircle of the triangle PQR is 100 pi. So from this you get an idea that you should really thoroughly understand the whole topic to answer a question when it is about IATJ. Now this is relatively a simple question. Let us see how to answer this. So we'll first make a sketch. So we have a triangle PQR here. So we are given that the triangle PQR has an angle of PQR as 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees. And we are given the sides PQ and QR are 10 square root 3 and 10 respectively. So drawing is not to the scale for sure. Yes. We need to figure out what is the angle QPR. So we need to find what this angle is. Now whenever you are given two sides and an angle. So we are given side, angle, side. That means cosine law. So using cosine law, let us figure out what is PR equals to. Correct? So let's find what PR is equal to. So we can say PR square, let me write down here. So we'll say PR square should be equal to uh, QP square plus this square minus 2AB cos theta, right? So we'll write 10 square root 3 whole square plus 10 square minus 2 times 10 square root 3 times 10 times cos of 30 degrees. So that is what PR square is. So once we know PR, we can use sine law and find the angle, correct? Now cos of 30, so cos of 30, let's make our special triangle. So 30 degrees, 60 degrees, I mean, this is 60 degrees for me. This is 30 degrees. 1, 2, square root 3. So, cos of 30 degrees is square root 3 over 2. Correct? Okay. So, we'll substitute that value here. So, PR square equals 2. We got 100 times 3. That is 300 plus another 100 minus. So, we get 100 times 2. So, we get 200 and then we have square root 3 and then cos of 30 is square root 3 over 2. Okay. So this uh, can be simplified. Let's write like this. So PR square equals to 300 plus 100 minus that 2 goes and we get 300 here, right? So we get 300 here. So that gives you 100. So PR square is 100, so that gives you that PR is basically equal to square root of 100, which is 10. So this side is also 10. Well, that makes things simpler. That means it is an isosceles triangle, right? So the sides opposite should be same. So this angle is 30 degrees. 
and so angle QPR is 45 degrees is false so that is definitely not the right answer okay so let's move on and then see what is the area of the triangle PQR and also we have to find the angle QRP well angle QRP we can still find so let me do that part angle QRP will be what 180 minus 60 right so this is equals to 180 degrees minus 30 minus 30 which is 120 degrees so this part is correct this part is correct correct so let's move on to the next page we'll copy the diagram we know now this is 10 that is 120 and then we will find the area of this triangle okay so now let's do part b let me just sketch the triangle once again here all right so we got the triangle we are saying this is 10 square root 3 this we found also as 10 this is 10 this is 30 degrees okay now the sides are p q and r perfect and we found that this is correct right this is correct this side is 30 since it is an isosceles triangle and that angle has to be 120 drawing is not to the scale perfect now let's see how to find area of this triangle now area we could find we can drop a perpendicular from here right in that case let's say this is d so we know pd will be equals to uh, 10 square root 3 sine of 30 degrees okay so sine of 30 degrees will be half so it is 10 square root 3 by 2 so which is 5 square root 3 correct so we know this side is 5 square root 3. So area of triangle PQR is half base which is QR times PD which we'll write as half of 10 times 5 square root 3. Okay, so that gives us 25 square root 3 so that's true so that 25 square root 3 is correct so it matches so this is perfectly fine so we'll circle this right because we are looking for true answers correct now let's move on to the next question in the triangle PQR let okay the same question we need to find the radius of the in circle of the triangle pqr and then we have to match right so basically what we have is this triangle which is not drawn to the scale we are looking for the radius of this circle r right now, how is radius in related? We actually found the area, right? We found the area just now as, uh, I think it was 25 square root 3, right? So it was 10 times 10 square root 3, and this side was 5 square root 3, right? Correct. So half of this, half base into height, 25 square root 3, was our area. Correct. Now, we need to find the radius of the in circle. And is it 10 square root 3 minus 15? That is what we need to figure out. Now, if you remember, the radius is related with the, with the parameter of the particular triangle. Correct. So, so the radius is basically equal to area of triangle this is in circle radius r which we're talking about divided by semi perimeter
I'll attach this file which gives you the derivation of the formula at the end of the video. So basically the radius is area of the triangle. Let me write area of the triangle and semi periperiod S in bold so that you remember this formula, right? So we are directly going to apply this formula and get the result. We know area is given to us as this and what is semi perimeter? We know all the three sides. This was also 10. So we'll do 10 plus 10 plus 10 square root 3 divide by 2, right? So that's what we have and that is 20 plus 10 square root 3 divide by 2. So S is 10 plus 5 square root 3, right? And therefore, we can now find R using the formula. So R is equals to the area of the triangle divided by S, which is 25 square root 3 over, over this value. 10 plus 5 square root 3. Okay, so we could simplify this, dividing all by 5, we get 5 square root 3 divided by 2 plus square root 3. And what we need to match with is 10 square root 3 minus 15. So we need to rationalize this, correct? So let's rationalize. So we'll multiply by 2 minus square root 3 over 2 minus square root 3, correct? So let's see what do we get now. So what we get here is r equals 2. Um, when you multiply, you get 5 times 2, 10 square root 3 minus 5 times 3, 15. Okay. And the denominator will be a square minus b square, which is 4 minus 3, which is 1. So that's what you get. So you get 10 square root 3 minus 15. That is correct. So we got the same as this. So this part is correct, right? So c is also correct. Perfect. Now let's move on and uh, do part D. Now in the same triangle PQR, we need to find area of the circumcircle of the triangle PQR and we have to match it with 100 pi. So basically now we are looking into the area of the circle and we have our triangle inside, right? So we have a triangle which is PQR kind of like this. So in this triangle, we know the sides are 10 square root 3, 10 and 10. Uh, so first thing which we need to find is the is the radius, right, of the circumcenter. So, so let's say that radius, let's say this is O. So OP, which we need to find, right. Now, how do you relate this radius with the uh, sides of a triangle. So if you remember, you know, uh, we have this formula that uh, twice the radius, twice the radius is basically equals to any side over sine of that angle, right? Sine of that angle. So this is a very important formula which can be applied here. I'll provide you the derivation of this formula so that, you know, you could apply it and understand how. So basically when we are working on a topic, we have to relate it with so many other things and remember the relations to solve. Otherwise, it becomes slightly time consuming to derive and then do the needful, right? Okay, so we'll apply this formula to find, we're calling that to be the radius OP, right? So in our case, uh, we know that the, we can use any angle. We know this was 30, that is a better side to use. We'll use any side we can use, 30 and 30, correct? So we can use these sides. So Q. So we can say twice this radius OP in our case, right, will be equal to the side opposite to Q is 10. So 10 over sine 30. Is that okay? Sine 30. So we get OP as equals to half of 10 over, what is sine 30? Sine 30 is half, right? So in our triangle, this, as you know, this is 1, 2, and that angle is 30 degrees, correct? So sine 30 is half. 
right so so we get op as equal to 10 because this 2 cancels with this half so we get op as 10 now if op is 10 then the area of circumcircle will be pi op square correct which is pi times 10 square which is indeed 100 pi is it okay so that answer is also correct we have to circle the correct answers so that is how we are going to solve this question so you must have observed here that this question involves uh, relating the triangle the circle cosine law sine law so that's the beauty of the question and i hope it is helpful for all of you feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great also you can look for the derivation of these formulas at the end of the video which i'm going to attach with them i hope that really helps thank you and all the best here we are going to describe and derive a formula between in radius and the sides of the triangle when i say in radius that means we have a circle inside a triangle inscribed in a triangle and in radius is the radius of this circle which is inscribed right so so that is the radius which we are talking about we want to relate this radius with the sides of the triangle so if we have a circle inscribed in a triangle in that case all the sides will be tangent to the radius right so we have a right triangle right there let us say that the triangle is triangle abc then the sides could be referred to as lowercase abc right Now, in this particular triangle, as you will see, that if I join the center, let's say the center is O, if I join the center with the vertices, then what do I get? I get three different triangles. Right? Now, we can say that the area of the big triangle ABC is basically equal to area of small triangles AOC plus triangle COB plus triangle AOB right so area of all these combined right so we have one of these triangles that is like one of the triangles correct then we could have the other triangle right there and the third triangle so it is sum of all these three triangles. Now area of triangle is half base into height, right? So we could write the area of this triangle is what? Half of this side times height. Area of the other triangle will be half of the other side times height. Now in all the three cases, height is what? R, right? That is the height. Right, so we can write down these areas as half of area of triangle AOC will be B times R plus COB will be half times A times R plus the angle triangle AOC it will be side C times R. So we can take half R common we get B plus A plus C. Or we can say it is R times A plus B plus C divided by 2. So that becomes the area of triangle. A. Right? Now many times we use S 
as sum of the sides divided by 2, right? So I could also write this as area is R times S. Perfect. So that is a very good relation to remember. So if I make this triangle here, to remember the relation between them, in that case area is R times S. So what is R? The inscribed circle radius. Well, the inscribed circle radius R is equals to the ratio of area over S, right? So these are two very important formulas which you should remember. So when we say circumradius, we basically mean to say that we are trying to find the radius of a circle in which we could inscribe a triangle or circle is circumscribed on a triangle. So let us assume that this is a triangle and here we have a circle of radius, let's say capital R, which circumscribes. We need to find a relation of this radius, capital R, with a relation of radius capital R with the sides of the triangle. Now for that let's do a bit of construction here. Let us assume that we have center O here. So we'll join center O with the two vertices of a triangle. Let the triangle be ABC. So side opposite to A will refer to as lowercase a, right. Now let us say that I drop a perpendicular from the center to BC. Now since these are the two radii of a circle, they are same, correct? And therefore, we'll have the same angles also here, correct? and we have 90 degrees. So these are common side. So these are actually congruent triangles, correct? So in that case, the length here, let's call this point as a D, right? So in that case, we know BD will be equals to DC and both will be equal to half of A, correct? Now, let us say the angle here is theta. Let me use a different color here. If this angle is theta, the total angle at the center will be 2 theta. So the smaller angle will be also theta, correct? These two will also be theta each. Because the center angle will be twice that angle, right? So now we have a right triangle. So if you look into the triangle, which is B, D, O, in this particular triangle, what is sine theta equals to? Well, sine theta is opposite side over hypotenuse. The opposite side is B, D, and the hypotenuse is O, B. So from here, you can see that sine theta is basically equal to B to D is half times A and OB is our capital R, the circumradius, right? So from here, we get a relation between circumradius and the side length, correct? So if I cross multiply, I get radius is equal to A by 2 sine theta. Correct? So that becomes a relation between the radius, the side and the angle opposite, like a sine law, right? So if you want to relate it to sine law situation, you could actually write this formula as 2R equals to A over sine A because this angle theta is actually the angle A, right? 
So that is how we can actually relate circum radius with angles and sides of a triangle. That's a very important formula. Now let's also derive another formula where uh, we will relate the side lengths with the circum radius. So for that, I have a triangle here and we'll take this triangle as, uh, let's say triangle ABC, any triangle, which is circumscribed with this particular circle. Now let's join point B with the center of the circle, right? Let's say this is the circle center. Then that becomes the diameter, right? Let's call this point as point D. So in that case, this length B to circumcenter will put O, right? We'll put D here. So in that case, what we have here is OD is the diameter, right? Uh, half of the diameter. because B to D is the diameter, I wrote OD, half of the diameter. So which is the radius R for us? So we'll call this as radius R, the circum radius. Now we need to find this radius with respect to sides ABC of a triangle. Now in this particular triangle, let me drop a perpendicular from B to base AC let this be the perpendicular, this side be this point be E. And let us say that so that becomes the perpendicular. Now if I join points A and D in that case that is a semicircle. So in semicircle, we'll have a right triangle. Right? So that becomes a right triangle. Perfect. Now we also see that these two angles, they should be equal. Reason being that both these angles are on the same arc, arc AB. Right? So this angle, angle BDA, and angle BCA both are on this arc so we have that angle BDA is equal to angle BCE and that is 90 degrees so we know angle BAD is equal to angle BEC both of them are 90 degrees. So from this, we can say that the triangle BAD is similar to the triangle BEC, correct? AA property, right? So from AA property. Is that clear? So these two triangles are similar. Now once this big triangle and that small triangle, we show that they are similar. In that case, we can now say that the sides are in fixed ratio, right? So, so what we have here is B to D over B to A is basically equal to B to C over B to E, right? Now, B to C is side opposite to A. I'll call this as lowercase a, right? So this side I'll call as a and this I'll call as height h. Is it okay? So we could write b to c as a, b to e as h. Now b d. b to d is 2 times r. And b to a, this side is opposite c, so we'll name this as c. Is it okay? So this will be side c. So we just name them as per our triangle sides. Now, this height h, we can relate with the area of the triangle, correct? 
So, for the triangle ABC, what is the area of triangle? ABC. The area A is half of base AC, which is B, times height H. So, from here, I can write that height is 2A divided by B is height. Now, replacing that height in this formula, what do we get? We get 2R over C equals to A over, instead of height, I am writing twice area over B. Correct? Now, we can actually correlate radius with the area of a triangle and the sides of the triangle. So, if I cross multiply, take C on this side, that B comes on the top, we get A, B, C in the numerator and this 2 in the denominator. So, we can write R is equals to A, B, C over 4A. Is that clear? So, we cross multiply to isolate R. Does it make sense to you? So, R is A, B, C divided by for A. So, if we know the area of the triangle, in that case, we can find the value of circumcenter radius using this formula. Correct? So, that is a very good way of relating them. So, that's the second formula, which we should remember, which is radius R is equals to product of all the three sides divided by four times the area. So, these are two very important formulas to find the circum radius when we are solving questions related to triangles and circles. So, I hope the derivation is absolutely clear and it's easy to remember that the radius, twice the radius is A over sin A, that is a sine law kind of portion, right? Twice the radius. See, if you know angle C, it could be C over sin C. In this case, radius is equal to, the circum radius is equal to product of all the three sides divided by four times the area. Perfect. So, that is how we relate them. <clears throat> I hope you find them useful. We will take a few multiple choice questions based on this. Feel free to share my videos with your friends and if you like and subscribe to them, that will be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.